Hi, I'm Anders and welcome to my first movie. This movie covers how to cover your skin on frame kayak with fabric. And uh, a lot of you have already bought my kit and this is, uh, this is an instruction partly meant for those who have bought the kit. Uh, I'm going to show you what's in the kit first and then we're going to look at some materials and uh, tools. So, first of all, and most importantly, this is the fabric. Most people buy 5.5 meters of this fabric. It's a polyester nylon mixture. It's 60% polyester, 40% nylon. And it's really super strong. You should not worry about puncturing your cag when you use this fabric. It's almost three times as strong as the heaviest canvas I have and uh, I've been using that for 25 years and never had problems with it and this is three times stronger so no concern about strength the good thing about it is it's very light also and it's very flexible so it's easy to stretch and since it's fairly thin it's very easy to stitch it together and make a, a nice looking finish on it so it's a really good choice of material for covering a kayak if you haven't bought it, you should consider buying it now. It will s can save you uh, a lot of trouble. Why I use polyester nylon mixture? I've experimented a lot lately with different um, artificial fibers like nylon mainly. In our cold and um, wet climate here in Norway, nylon is not a perfect choice because it may look nice when you um, make it but then when you carry the kayak out in wet and cold conditions, it looks, get, starts to look bulky uh, since the nylon fibers expand in uh, high humidity. So uh, the polyester is more stable in that sense. Um, but the problem with pure polyester is that it's hard to stretch nicely around a fa frame. Uh, and I think I found the perfect solution with this mixture. Um, so that's the fabric and um, included in the package is also a thread. This is a braided fishing line uh, and it's uh, really thick so it's easy to work with and it doesn't kind of um, tear the, the fabric fibers too much apart which is good. Um, and it's um, yeah, it's just super strong, so it's easy to work and stretch the the cover with this uh, thread. And for sewing, I also have included these two needles in the kit. You have mainly a straight sail sailmaker's needle for most stitching, and for the end stitching, you have. A Crooked sailmaker needle, and uh, you just watch the video and you see how these are being used. Then we have some uh, rope included in the package. A lot of people have difficulty finding rope that looks good on a kayak. This has a very uniform um, feel to it. It has like a braid on the outside, and it's made of pure natural hemp. So um, if you just make sure to impregnate it well, this will last forever and it's plenty strong enough for your kayak project. And I'm going to show you how it can be inserted in your kayak in one of the next video parts. Then when you have covered the whole kayak, most people want to give it a color. The fabric in itself is white. And if you just varnish it like that, it will get a little bit like it will take almost take the color of the varnish, but not completely. I don't think that looks very good. Some people think it looks good. I don't think so. Uh, so a lot of people want a nice color and I have a big um, variety of different colors available that will follow the kit. So you just pick one and uh, follow my instructions how to color the fabric. And then finally, after stitching your kayak together, it will not be 100% waterproof. 
So um, after the first coat of varnish, I will show you how to use this. It's called TransClear and it's actually a construction glue. It's transparent and it's flexible and it will seal the seams nicely. And uh, the good thing is you can varnish over it. So you do that between the first coat of varnish and the additional coats of varnish you're gonna give your kayak. Um, and that's it. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit of technique about how to cut fabric because you can't use uh, scissors on this fabric. It will get frayed. You need some other tools for that. And I can, can just show you in the next little bit what kind of tools you can use. Then I'm gonna have a small portion of movie that concerns other tools you need for your care covering project. We're gonna get back to that. And finally at the end, I'm gonna show you how to get started by folding the fabric. And uh, then you need to wait till the next part of the movie to see how we get started stretching the fabric. And then we'll follow all the steps till your kayak is finished. So enjoy and have fun. In this little video, we're gonna look at how to cut the fabric. See, the problem with cutting the fabric is you can cut it with a scissor, but what happens afterwards is that it frays like this and it gets really messy to work with. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some different tools for uh, cutting fabric and uh, how to deal with problems. First of all, obviously, you can just cut with the scissors. Everyone has them at home. And I'm sure everyone has some source of fire in the home too. And you can easily just cut the, just take the cutted edges and burn them. This takes some time and it's not gonna be perfect. Now this is okay, but it may still fray a little. So you may need to go over it several times. It may start to burn. And it's not easy to do this precisely. But then, then again, if you have the time, it's a really simple and cheap method of cutting fabric. So this is number one. Some other tools I have here. I'm beginning with the very simple ones. And that is a soldering iron. This is probably the cheapest soldering iron you can get. And a lot of people have them at home. Maybe your neighbor has one and you can borrow it. So you don't need to go and buy a lot of junk you don't need afterwards. As you can see, it doesn't work very fast, but it works precisely and easily. And you get edges that don't fray. So that's a good option. Real cheap soldering iron. I also have a soldering gun here. This is also the cheapest one I could get. And again, a lot of your neighbors may have one. So go and ask. It takes a little time to just warm up. But once it's warm, it works nicely fairly fast and precisely. So this is a good option. I also brought this little tool. When I grew up, we used to decorate wood with this kind of tools. It's, it's, a, it's a burn tool for decorating wood. And uh, it has a really fine tip, which allows precise cutting. This doesn't work very fast, but it, it works. And finally, I have a professional tool here. It's meant for cutting uh, ropes. 
and I use this all the time. It's my favorite because it works really fast and precisely. And uh, just need a little time to warm up. And there you go. But then again, this is the expensive solution. So see what you have and find out. That was a little bit about cutting fabric and tools for cutting fabric. And now we're going to take a look at the rest of the tools. And I'm going to do this in order of appearance. Obviously, when you've already built a kayak, you have used a couple of workbenches. So you're going to need a couple of workbenches, regardless size, um, to put the kayak on so you get it up in a good height for you to, to work comfortably. Two workbenches. And um, then you're going to need a couple of straps. I took these old, worn out roof rack straps. I've used them for, for, um, for tying my kayaks to the roof rack of my car for a lot of times. Just simple, solid rack straps. You're going to use them for a lot of different purposes. Tying a kayak to the, your workshop, for holding the cockpit in place and other stuff. You're going to need <coughs> a couple of uh, clamps, medium to a big. It's important that you have a couple of real solid ones that you can fasten well, because when you stretch the fabric, we're going to use a lot of force and uh, they need to be fastened here and be able to resist all that force. So a couple of these, see what you can find or borrow from your neighbor. And then for stretching canvas, we're, we're using this one. It's a racket strap, also for tying loads to a trailer or a car. But this is like the heavy duty stuff. And um, I chose this one. You can use other tools as well, but I chose this one because it's something that a lot of people have in their homes. And if you don't have it in your home, then probably your neighbor has one in his or her home. So that's uh, a thing you're going to need. And I continue here. In order of appearance, you need a staple gun. And um, check out the staples. These are like the tiniest kind I can find at all. And it's important that they're not too big because they will cut little holes in your fabric. And uh, of course you can patch it up. Uh, the varnish will make it waterproof anyway. But uh, I prefer to do as little damage to the fibers of the fabric as I can. And I do that with little tiny little staples. For the ropes in the cast, you're going to need some tape. You're probably going to need that for other purposes as well. So just ordinary masking tape. For making holes in the fabric where you put in the deck ropes, you can use an awl like this. This is a big one. Uh, but you can also use a screwdriver if you don't have an awl big, big enough. And you can even use your knife if you're very careful. And then we have come to staining the fabric. You can spare little containers of yogurt, uh, ice cream, etc. Um, and use it for your stain and for your varnish, for rinsing your brushes. And you're going to need a brush. This is a 70 millimeter, that's three inches. Uh, brush. It makes it very easy to give the, the coloring an even and nice look with a white brush and it can you can work fast with that one. And then finally we've come to varnish and here's a couple of things. For tools you can use either in the video I'm using a brush but I'm also using for the last strokes I'm using um, a roll. And I suggest a small roll because you have narrow surfaces all over the kayak and it's easier to work with than a big one, I think. Uh, and then it comes to varnish. 
In the video I used this product. For those who live in Norway or Sweden or maybe Denmark, Beel Tamer is very well known. And this is a, a one part alkyde um, urethane varnish. And it's not very toxic, it doesn't smell a lot. Uh, and it's uh, ordinary varnish that is uh, suitable for any project. Um, usually it's used as floor varnish. But I'm gonna say pr probably almost any varnish will do the job. You can look at the variations of floor varnish and boat varnish and where you live you can for sure find a good product which is easy to use and and it does the job it simply the only rule you need to follow is it should not be water based it should be alkyd based alkyd is a wor another word for oil oil based product or like in this case urethane based i can um, I won't say I can really recommend this product. It's a polyurethane varnish, which means it's a two-part varnish. You mix these two together and you get an even stronger varnish than the other one. But you also get a varnish much more toxic, so you really need to be careful with um, ventilation and uh, protecting your lungs with a mask if you wanna use this stuff. Besides, it's pretty expensive compared to this one. So it's not my first choice. And finally, I just want to show you this one. It's a German patent. It's called Coelan. And I think nowadays it goes under the name Extreme Coat. It's also um, a very good, very quality um, varnish, which is flexible and strong and everything. The problem is again, it's uh, very expensive. It's like 10 times the price of this product. And um, I've testing this really ordinary varnish for years now, and it really does the job. It's a, a great product. It needs to get strong, waterproof, and smooth. That's the, the criteria we are following. The very first thing we're gonna do is to lay out the fabric flat on the floor, fold it over, and make a sharp fold. I use the handle of my knife to just flatten out the fabric like this and this enables us to center the fabric on the frame in a little while. Um, I think that was about everything so please enjoy the video. Have fun.